Yo, what's really good though? It's your girl, Yezzy, is it? And it's your girl, AY, you done not already. And you are locked in for a very special episode. But first, we've got a guest in the building. For the people that don't know who you are, can you please let them know? Uh, okay, I go by the name of Boy Nash. Um, I'm a creative artist. You know, I'll just leave it as that. You know, creative artist, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and you know it's Oasis, so we're going to talk about our opinions. Drop some gems, some knowledge, and if you don't like it, you know what I'm always going to say is kick rocks. Okay. So we were talking about, um, we wanted to talk about like religion within the music industry and like how it's perceived, how people take it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, there's not that many, there's artists out here that do do like, like not say religious music, but they will try and implement it in their music and not many people necessarily like gravitate to them or take them in or like yeah. if the, or if the artist is very religious, yeah. not many people necessarily would take that person in because they're like, ah. Oh, they're too much of that way. I don't, yeah. I don't relate or whatever. Whereas yeah. opposed to if someone's out here just slinging drugs mm. in, money left, right, and sent, oh, you're going to take him in. You know what I mean? And they might say, oh, yeah, but I am religious though. And you're like, oh, okay, but he's religious. Mm. So I've been, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah so we're just kind of wanting to discuss yeah. your perspective because I know, like, you're religious, right? Yeah. That's, what, that's the question I was going to ask yes. you. I was like, why me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why me? So you're religious, <laughs> right? Like, why me? Why me of all yeah. people did you pick for this one? <laughs> Yeah. Mm. No, but seriously, why me? Why did you pick me for this particular topic? If if asking just in because I feel like I've seen your like I've seen mm. your stories and stuff and like your posts. I believe that you are re- like really okay. religious and stuff. So I thought I'd like to see to your see. perspective yeah. on like how it is you're navigating it as yeah. an artist and re- like because you're very much like yeah. heavy religious. You know, okay. Okay. I would know. And if you don't know, it, then you're no, not watching in- your your face, your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what it is. Yeah, as an artist, it's interesting you said that because mm-hmm. I don't know how people perceive me. Mm-hmm. I just put up what I put up. So, yeah, yeah. So that's so it's interesting to hear from the outside. Like, oh, okay, so you perceive me. So when you look at my stuff, you perceive me to be a religious, mad person in our artist. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, what was the question again, sir? <laughs> <laughs> just like, like, talk about in your perspective and like, because yeah. oh, I guess, I guess you said that. Oh, your yeah. to you, it's just you being you kind of yeah. thing. So it's not like oh, I'm being I'm religious, I'm religious yeah, yeah, I'm this I'm and really, that. Yeah. Like, because which it kind of comes down to identity when you talk about, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because it's like, guess people are seeing you as oh, you're religious and you're this, whereas opposed to to you, it's like yeah. that's just part of me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think like the impression I get. Boy Nash is that you're unapologetic with it. Mm, yeah. And that's what okay. I respect a lot. Yeah. We're okay. living in a time where a lot of people like to shy away and do what's cool and what's acceptable. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. don't want to rock the boat. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I get that to a degree, but <clears throat> excuse me, there comes a time where you have to stand in your purpose yes. and in your position unapologetically. Yes. Because we all have someone to answer to, whether you believe it or not. Well, mm-hmm. I believe that. Mm-hmm. And I never want to get to that point where I go, yeah, I mean, I only did that because that's what everyone else was doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. Was what was it wasn't time. cool. It wasn't mm-hmm. seen as acceptable. Or that's know? just mm-hmm. part of the model of being an exactly. artist or being a whatever. That's yeah. part of it. You don't really show that side. Exactly. Stay away from politics. Stay away from religion. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, we're creatives. And mm-hmm. uh, Nash, if you don't mind me saying this, yeah. he's not small time. Like, you know, we're going to toot his trumpet, you know? Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. And when you get to certain platforms like that, all eyes are on you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and there's mm-hmm. an extra microscope as to the context of what you're saying. Yeah. Every, okay. It's not everyday flows and punchlines. Sometimes yeah. it's what are you actually saying? Yes, yeah. yes. To actually know the content of the man, in yes. this case. Mm-hmm. And what he's actually about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's I think that's why the religion ties into uh, it because yeah. there's a difference between people that are religious, yeah. yes, and believe in a religion and believe in a way of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I yes. think that we're gonna delve into all those uh, layers because there's a lot of layers. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. So what? So what is your actual beliefs? Because yeah. it's not really cut and dry. Yeah. Yeah. Because because I've yeah Let yeah 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 exactly yeah yeah. What, is, what um, are your beliefs? Because it's not worldly known. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's not yeah. commercialized. So, like, in 2020, pandemic hit, I think the pandemic changed everyone in a different way. In a different yeah, yeah, way. But yeah. I've always been that sort of spiritual... Do you know, I'm bubbly on that. I like fun yeah. and whatnot. I think sometimes when people see me, so when people see me on the ground, they think I'm just this serious guy. <laughs> anointing oil, rosary, and just, you know, I'm just walking... That. No, I'm, a, I'm just a normal person. But mm-hmm. deep within myself, I know there's something more out there. Mm. Yeah. I know that... Like, I know there's always more. Like, even when I was growing up, but like, I spent a couple of, a bit of time in Ghana and whatnot. And I was like, I always knew when things would happen, I always say, there's something behind that. There's a reason why things happen. I yeah. always question everything. Mm. So for me, 
I know that there is a deeper source out there. Yeah. Again, when I grew up, people rap about the roads, people rap about this, that, okay? And when I first started rapping, I always had that spiritual element in me, but sometimes I would sway to that side. Mm-hmm. So I'll be lukewarm mm-hmm. a bit mm-hmm. because it's like, I'm trying to fit in, but I'm trying to put in my little message. Yeah, yeah. And then when COVID hit and all of that, I just became an Israelite. Like, I don't know, my mind just okay. opened... My mind opened, I saw the loopholes within Christianity because I grew up in a Christian home. Mm. So I, I saw the loopholes within Christianity. I saw the history. Mm. I looked at a lot of things. like, And then I just changed my perspective. Do you mm. get what I'm saying? And, I, and when, you become, when you become an Israelite, that's the difference between religion is man-made. Mm. Okay. Religion is a man-made Talk thing. Christianity it. is a man-made thing, unfortunately. Islam is a man-made thing, unfortunately. Do you get what I'm saying? It's man-made. But when you look at, when I became an Israelite, Israelite is not a religion. It's a culture. It's a way of life. So I couldn't be an Israelite and still be lukewarm. I couldn't do that, bro. I can't go to congregation, be around my brothers, be around people, and I'm not living that right life. I'm lying to myself. I'm being a hypocrite. Mm -mm. I don't want to be a hypocrite, man. I can't be a hypocrite. Any sign of hypocrisy, it's just, I feel bad within myself. So I said, you know what? Man stepping into this one, and this is who I am. My spirit, everything aligned. The Semtex thing aligned. Mm-hmm. Even if you listen to the Semtex product, it's all Israelite project throughout. Everything just aligned. Mm-hmm. So it allowed me to step into my purpose because now there's a man who in the industry is respected. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't just pick up the phone and call you, bro. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Why did he call you? And every time we sat down and we spoke, he said, bro, what you talk about is different, bro. Yeah. I respect that. I like that. I yeah. want to know more about that. So that's how, so it just made me, sh- it just showed me that if I trust in this divine force that I do not know, he's going to lead me to places because with all things being equal, I shouldn't have a fire in the booth. I shouldn't have met Semtex. I shouldn't have met Charlie. I shouldn't be on the stage with JLA. I shouldn't do all these things mm-hmm. because everyone will say, no, you're rapping about things that people don't want to hear. Yeah. But people do want to hear. Mm-hmm. That's where we, that, that's the misconception. People want that stuff. Yeah. So even though we like, da, 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 yes, like you like, you're into spirituality. Yeah. There's a part of you where one day you sit down and you question things and you go, why is life like this? Everyone does it. Yeah. There's yeah. no one in this earth that sits down and goes, we were just getting on with life. And you one day will sit there and question what is life about because we're spirit before flesh. Yeah. So you're always yeah. going to think about that. Yeah. So um, to touch on your question, Israelite tradition is not a religion. It's a way of life. Okay. okay. It's a culture. It's a way of doing things. Do you get what I'm okay. saying? And that's all it is. And it mm. comes down through heritage. But with the Israelite doctrine, it's not to do with colour. A lot of people like to have this misconception that it's to do with colour. It's yeah. never to do with colour because when you look deep into the word, you get what I'm saying? One rule for the Israelite, one rule for the stranger. So whether you're Israelite or not, as far as even if you're a stranger and you're not Israelite and you join in with the culture, you are still as one that is within it because mm-hmm. you are following the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And that's what I loved about it because I would question like People would say, but how do you know you're Israelite though? Come on, bro. And, it's, and that is a very true point. How will I know I'm Israelite? I can't check my blood. Yeah. I don't know. Do yeah. you get what I'm saying? I don't know. But the signs are upon us. There's signs that have been laid out which reflect and point towards a lot of the black people and people that live on the coast of Ghana. I'm Ghanaian and live around that African diaspora. So a lot of things have led me to believe that. So it's not a religion. <coughs> it's a way of life. Okay. okay. That's it. And yeah. what okay. I wanted, because I wanted to just touch on something, because you said during COVID. Yeah. Obviously, that's a time of dismay, mm. confusion, a lot of things. What was, like, the straw that broke the camel's back for you that you were like, I need to make this shift? Because mm. I'm imagining mm. something must have had to happen mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't mind. That yeah, yeah, no, that. that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, and also, if I'm talking a lot, just let me know, man. No, I, no, I talk, we, we need that. I'm passionate Trust about me, because we're the ones that always talk about it. <laughs> I talk a lot, man. So, yeah, viewers, I talk a lot, man. <laughs> I, I have to let you know. Um, 2020, if I remember the story, my life is so in the present, yeah, I'll be real. Sometimes I forget. Yeah, I hear that. I'm so weird. I just forget yeah. my past. Yeah. But let me go back. 2020, March. Yeah. March, you know the month. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> we're coming up to Easter. yeah. And I'm a man that questions things. Okay. And I don't know why my spirit just likes to question things. I'm just, even my mom, she's like, nah, you're so argumentative. Like, why do you argue all the time? I'm that, I'm very vocal, innit? Yeah. But I don't mean it in a malicious way. I'm not a bad person, yeah. but I just, 
I just don't like injustice and I always stand my ground. I don't care who you are, what you like. Well, sometimes I do, but mm. then that's my flesh kicking in. Do you know what I mean? But um, March is coming up to Easter and I did a little research on Easter. And then when you look at the ins and outs of Easter, it traces back to a Babylonian uh, feast. So a Babylonian feast celebrating the goddess of Ishtar, which is the fertility goddess. Mm -hmm. So I'm researching and I've read this stuff. You know me, man. Sometimes I don't think as much. Man. I just post my thing on the gram, innit? Ishtar, I knew Ishtar was in it. And I've posted it. And I'm like, and I've told my mum, I'm like, because my mum's a heavy Christian. I'm like, mum, look, you see, I told you this thing's rigged. I told you the thing's rigged. Look, it's Ishtar. How are they celebrating Easter? And then as I've put that up, there's a girl called Hamira. Um, she's an Asian girl. She was, uh, she became an Israelite as well. She was in it before me. And then she messaged me. She was like, oh, have you heard of the Apocrypha? I said, wait, 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 what's the Apocrypha? What are you talking about? I research it. It's the 14 books that were taken out of the Bible in 1611. Yeah, yeah. I said, like, well, why did they do that? She's like, yeah, well, they hired a sign in it. That's why they did that. And I said, well, okay, cool. And then while I'm going through this period, I'm fasting. So I like to fast sometimes. For whatever reason, I can't remember what the reason was. I must have been going through something hard in life. And then I'm just fasting yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And every time I'm fasting, I'm seeing this number, 777. Everywhere. Okay. 777. I check a page, 77 likes. Oh, outside, number 777. I'm like, wow, why am I seeing this? What's the meaning of this? Mm -mm -mm. Do you get what I'm saying? And then my friend Gabriel, he sent me an Israelite podcast. And I put the podcast on while I was asleep and I was listening to it. Still not sold. Yeah, okay, cool, whatever. Listen to it. Mm, all right. And then Hamira, I'm trying, I'm asking bare questions. So now I'm asking Hamira, what's this mean? Why yeah. this? What, what do you mean, Israel? Why, where does this come from? Mm -mm. And then she directs me to a guy called Jeremiah. Um, and then Jeremiah gets on the phone with me. Three hours we had a conversation. And everything he said just resonated with my spirit. Mm. He took me through Deuteronomy 28 and spoke of the looked at the curses. So a lot of the things will be signs upon the people to see who the real people are. And the one that got me was the one about slavery mm. and the one about black on black crime. Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh, these things are happening to our people. Mm. Then rah, we, we must be like, we, it must be us. We must be mm. the ones that they're talking about in the book. Then I'm seeing things in the book where it talks about the Israelites being black. Solomon saying he's black and calmly. I'm like, oh, that's where black and beautiful comes from. So now it's all just starting to add up. Then I look into the history. There's a YouTube page called Kingdom Preppers. Then I look at Kingdom Preppers and there's a documentary about the Israelites when they were conquered by the Roman Empire in 70 AD. And the Israelites fled. Because the, the, the attack came from the north and the Israelites were here, they fled into Africa. And a lot of them settled in Congo, Ghana. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Then I look at the old maps and where Ghana is, there's a place called the coast of Judah. Then I'm like, Judah's part of the 12 tribes. Then I'm like, oh, so from Jamaica, from Ghana, they were taken to Jamaica from the coast of West Africa. Oh my days, scattered across the nations. And I'm like, wait, black people are everywhere. Yeah. And then I'm like, and then I'm just going through. So imagine going through all of this knowledge bit by bit. And then I read a book called From Babylon to Timbuktu. And it explains everything about the West African Hebrew Israelites. Then I look at Ghanaian culture. You look at the Ashanti kingdom. Uh, the king of the Ashanti kingdom has the breastplate. He has a 12 breastplate on him. Mm. Same thing as the Israelites. They have a breastplate. Wait, they circumcise on the eighth day. Same thing as the Israelites. There's a town called... So Ashanti is an area in Ghana. And then I'm like, oh, so Ashan was a town in Israel or Yasharel back then. Oh my gosh, Ashanti. T means people, Ashanti. And all of this is... so. All of this is flowing. Yeah, yeah. It's flowing. Imagine it's flowing yeah. through your brain. I'm like, oh, oh my, my gosh, God. Yeah. I've been swindled. And remember, mm -hmm. I'm a religious guy. I've been swindled. So I'm a man who's <laughs> been paying tithe. I've been given to the pastor yeah, yeah, then. Yeah. I've been given, like, I believe in, my mom's heavy on it. So mm. I've, been, I've been given, I've been, and I'm like, these people lie to us. Mm -hmm. And I'm just starting to. So yeah, so basically, yeah. I'm going through all this information. Hamira's called me. Is it fine? And this guy, Jeremiah. Jeremiah's talking to me. So Jeremiah's talking to me. Show me Deuteronomy 28, all the scriptures, because it says that it will be a sign upon these people. So that's how you identify the people who it really is. So you look at the signs. What si If these signs follow these people, then it must be these people. Mm. Yeah, and one of them was slavery. One of them was black on black crime. One of them was being scattered amongst the nation. So when you look at a lot of black people, not all black people, but most of them, 
have been scattered amongst the nation. So I'm, I'm, I'm piecing all this information and then I'm looking at the Ashanti. So there's a town in Israel called Ashan, but in Ghana, there's a kingdom called Ashanti. So Ashan meaning Ashan and T mean people, Ashanti. So I'm like, hold on a minute. And Ashanti, the king, has a breastplate. And that's the same thing that the high priest of Israel, Aharon, had. He had a breastplate when mm. you read it. So I'm like, all these things are similar than the circumcision on the eighth day. Ashanti people do that. When mm. women are menstruating, they're unclean and they, they don't come near the man. Mm. And that is, this is all culture within the Ashanti. So I'm like, hold on a minute. This is all following to our people. Then when you look at the older maps, you have the coast of Judah. And it's like the coast of Judah is on the west of Africa. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Why is this the coast of Judah? That and Judah is part of the tribes of Israel or Yasharel. So I'm like, hold on. So all these things are piecing within my mind. Even when you look at the word Jamaica, this is another theory that came up. Jamaica. So they're taking over to Jamaica now. And in, in Chi, when you say, it, there's, a, there's a saying that goes, Jamayaka. And Jamaica, Jamayaka means, I think we're stuck. And that over the years has become Jamaica because when the slaves were taken over to, um, that's one thing that people don't know. When the slaves were taken from the West coast of Africa to um, Jamaica, a lot of them thought they were going to come back because slavery did exist. There was servitude, mm -hmm. but the way the British and the colonized, they did it was not how we did it. We didn't do slavery like that, mm -hmm. whipping people and for ours was a different sort of servitude. So a lot of them that went there, they thought they were going to come back. So when they mm -hmm. got there and they, they stayed there for so long, they were like, oh, Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica. And I believe that's how it became Jamaica in the long run. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them are taken over. Again, that's, that's not proven, but in my head, that's just how it kind of made, made sense to me. So this guy's taught me all of these things. I've read a book called From Babylon to Timbuktu, and it talks about the Hebrews of West Africa. And then when you look at it, across the scriptures, all across it, the people are black. No one can dispute that. The people of the book are black. Yeah. And there's so many examples from Solomon saying, I'm black and calmly. It's like, why would he say I'm black and calmly? Like, why would he say he wouldn't say that mm. if he wasn't black? Yeah. And then for them turning leprous when they turn white. How can you turn leprous? How can you be leprous as snow if you're already white? Mm -hmm. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. all those little little pieces like that just kind of put me on this path. And I said, okay, do you know what? And I linked up with a guy called Nathaniel Shalom. So naturally, so I was doing Saturday classes, um, lockdown, whatever, Saturday classes on Zoom. And they're just teaching me, they're teaching me, they're teaching me. I'm learning and I'm grabbing everything as we go along. And then one day, Nathaniel, uh, I seen Nathaniel Shalom talking about it. He's talking about the Easter stuff and all of this not being right and da-da-da and it's swindled and da-da-da. And I'm like, rah! And then I end up going to his congregation. And then from there, the rest is history. I just mm. went and I become a changed man. Like, I remember even when we spoke to you, I spoke to you in the mm. DMs on Instagram, you noticed that even our conversation, there might have been certain questions that you asked and I didn't want to answer. Mm -hmm. Because at that particular point, I, I was insecure. I wasn't fully myself. I was insecure in mm. me. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah. but becoming, identifying who I am and have, finding my identity, two years on, I'm solid. Yeah. So, what are, so what do you identify as now? I identify as a follower of Hebrew culture so, and tradition. So, so that's oh, an Israelite. Israelite. Okay, so you're an Israelite. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of people, they when you hear Israelite, they immediately think Israeli and then there's one image. Of yeah. As an Israeli person mm. type of thing. So yes. you're broadening the scope and the eyes of a lot of people who are like, oh, this isn't new. If anything, it's like coming right back. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this is something that you're taking back what was already a culture or, mm -hmm. or yeah. a, something that we were following mm -hmm. as black people, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. black people yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. I understand some black people are still very comfortable with being Christian and being mm. a Muslim, which is fine. But yeah. you're also rem reminding us of there's a lot more as well the, out yeah, there. Because think about it. How I looked at it was this. Ribena, right? If I got Ribena in this cup, right? It's it's right. This this is right. It's it's the strongest solution. Mm -hmm. If I pour water in it, it becomes diluted. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I dilute my Ribena? Mm. When you look at Christianity and you look at Islam and you look at the other religions, they are all diluted versions of Hebrew culture. Okay, so mm. you believe it even goes back further than Judaism, then? Hundred percent. Okay. So, well, some people like to say Judaism is Hebrew culture, but yeah, that's but how I was trying to. Judaism is 
Again, the man, the fish. They're, how they're converts. It, they're okay, converts. So how, does it, how does it take a part within your music? So has your music had to change? Have, how mm. you approach relationships? Yeah. Does mm. that change the type of woman you would even want to be with? Yeah. Does yeah. that change Facts. now? Facts. Because That's one of the reasons my relationship went... Yeah, because mm. I was going to ask yeah. about that. I didn't know if you're comfortable. I don't mind. It's not even an issue. Obviously, I, yeah. I, I remember the time around a certain year and I'm like, oh, I don't think he's with his partner anymore. Yeah. And I wanted to ask... Was that because of the change? It was part of it. I think I lacked a bit of patience at some points. Okay, I Obviously, respect the accountability. She did what she did. There's things that I won't discuss here. Yeah, yeah. But course. she did something yeah. that was very detrimental that you're not meant to do. And she did what she did. But I would take responsibility and say, I was, when I came into this knowledge and this truth, I was like, a lion who hasn't eaten in like 50 days and mm -hmm. it's hungry. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was just on this thing. Mm -hmm. I was just on this thing, like day in, day yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. I remember I did like a 30 day fast, just six to six every day. I was on this thing, like my mind, I wanted to connect because I believed there was more. So I was on this thing. So parts of me was kind of like, yeah, get with the program, man. You know, get, yeah, come mm. on down, get with the program. And then she got with the program for a bit. She came to one of the Shabbats and whatnot. But deep down, that's not what she was. She's more into mm -hmm. comedic side of things. Okay. She's more into, I would deem as what, witchcraft or magic yeah, yeah, or, you know, you know them things. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. the pots and the crystals and yeah, the, yeah. yeah, get me. And, and then sometimes she's praying to things. I don't know who she's praying to. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, so exactly. Yeah, because I, yeah. So when you're polar opposites, it's just one day going to go, but um, in all honesty, I'm happy though. I'm yeah. happy I got out of that because I've become the I'm becoming the best version of myself. Like, mm. like I take off my glasses. I'm happy. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna lie to you. I am so happy. Like yeah. I've become just a joyous person. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah, it did take a toll on, on people I interact with. But I was never someone who really linked up with bare people. I've mm. always been to myself. I'm, I don't know. I think I was a bit shy. Yeah. And I didn't really fit in. Like what, what, my, like what people talk about and that. I, they don't really like. I like deep conversations. I like yeah. to dive in. And a lot yeah. of people, not in a horrible way, but sometimes are a bit shallow or a bit. And it's like I'm, I don't want to have a conversation about girls and about like Love Island and. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and unfortunately, I don't. In it, mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I football and it doesn't really tick my it's box. It's okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm deeper. Yeah. So I need deeper people to connect with. So yeah, I have yeah. a select few of people, Leon, Don, Matt, J. These are these are my good friends I can just connect with. So I did have. So I wasn't really connecting with a lot of people, which I don't really do in the first place. But it did change my thought process, mm -hmm. um, how I do music. So now, my music is more devoted to the Most High. That's okay. how I look at music. I don't look at music as a career path no more. And that saved me because... I was getting depressed looking at music. I said, yeah, yeah, I was getting yeah, depressed. Yeah, yeah. I was getting sad. Because it takes a lot out That's of That's ironic you're saying that because I saw, I literally just saw a post of someone else that um, was in the music industry um, um, before before us and like they had the, they were getting the come ups but now they feel like they, they got to a point where they felt like they were just stagnant and getting pushed back and blah, blah, blah. And they realised like, rah, like, it kind of and when I was focusing on music in a sense of I need to be here and to do this and to do da 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 da, it will, they start becoming depressed and it start affecting them because you're like I'm not getting here I'm not doing that I'm not blah, blah, blah. you kind of lose the whole point of why you even started creating music yeah. in the first place and mm. so now they're kind of doing like a three sixty and coming back to that like do you know what I mm. need to go back and just do music because I want to do music. And, I was, and you know what I mean? And I feel yeah. like a lot of people get lost in that. A mm. lot of people, because they're like, numbers, 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 money, 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 yeah. level up, level up. You know, mm. even just in music in life, it's like you're always told, you need to go higher, you need to mm. go higher, you need to push, strive, better, better, better. But mm. it's like, where is it just, when, when do you get to the point you're just like, no, just appreciate. That's the thing. Just it's appreciate. A business, it's a business. Express, yeah. just enjoy mm. what you, you're doing. Mm. It's not always have to be the number, top mm. number one. Just enjoy mm. it because you never know who you're touching when you're enjoying mm. it. Mm. Some people are mm. connecting with it in a different level than mm. these people that you're, when mm. you're continuing to see, just trying to do number one, number one, yeah. you're connecting with people that thinking, yeah. you're thinking, I'm not even being true to myself. Mm. That's you the know? thing and it's the plateau of it all and mm. music is a business. Mm. Let's, let's, not, mm. let's not lie about mm. that one. But when a lot of people are eating from you, mm -mm. 
you're going to feel rinsed. You're going to feel drained. Mm. Because a lot of people need to make money off you. They don't care if you're mm. running on empty. Mm. But then if you look at it from a creative standpoint, a lot of the genres, when we're talking about hip-hop, jazz, R&B, the blues, mm. rock and roll, which originated from us, mm. these are very spiritual mm. genres that come, come from pain. Yes. Mm. Pain, love, um, just everything. Exactly. Mm. So when you want Music someone was to... medicine. was he's healing, he's healing to the mind, to the soul. You. Like, mm. And then you've got a, a machine that's expecting mm. you to translate into popular culture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they expect you to churn out that single every month. And mm. go on those six months or two, mm. uh, a year yeah. tour and put out those albums and they want mm. it by a certain date. But mm. you know that it took about maybe 10 years mm. to get to that album. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we're asking, mm. in regards to music now, is there a shift in what you're saying on the mic now? I've always, if you know me, I've always been that kind of conscious. Yeah, you know, yeah, I've always yeah. Been, it's always been a, because, yeah. because what I came across, what I found was always there. Mm. You see, everything, I believe everything's within us, you know, but mm. we're always looking outside. Everything's mm. around, like the videographer's around. He's, he's, he's right here. The, but we, we're taught to look up there, that's what music is like. Oh, you have to go higher, work mm. with this part. Work. But every, yeah. everything you need is around you. Yeah, everything yeah. is around you. And yeah. you. so what I came across was already in me. It's just I was like sparking the flame, but not sparking it properly. Yeah, let you it, know it what I'm ignite. Saying? It would ignite a bit mm. and it would go down. Because mm. so my music's always been spiritual, but I think now it's more. It's the same music. It's just yeah. now I know my identity. Mm, yes. So I know I know where to... So it's not just random spirituality and positive talk and mm-hmm. all of that. I know exactly what I'm doing. But I still make normal music. Like Road to Shalom, that it, my new, it's going to be... I'm working on. Yeah. Same sort of music. Mm. It's just more geared towards just... It's more fine tuned. So before maybe it might have been like this. Yeah. Now it's just like this. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it's the same mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's not as broad. It's more specific to what you're, the message you're putting across. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like love and frequency. Sorry, love and frequencies. That single I dropped, which um, shout out, it did two million. Yeah. I didn't know it was gonna do two million. You couldn't. Have, I thought complicated was gonna do more views. Yeah. But again, that was a sign to me that. That's where you're going because that yeah. was just more spiritual, da, 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 motivational. But it's the hundreds, same thing. It's, yeah. The music ain't changed. It's just more direct. You know what where you're going. You're confident. Yeah, you believe. So you whatever you're doing, it's like yeah, I know this is what I want to do. I'm not yeah. doing no yeah, and I'm working with everyone. Mm. I don't. I'm not like I'm not one of them. I'm like no, no, I'm not, I can't work with you. No, I don't link with you. I'm not one of them people. That's mm. uh, that's silly. Like in my opinion, like, oh, I'm not gonna be around you because you're no. I'm not gonna link with you and do a song because no, man, I still work. Mm. I still connect because I don't know whether my energy on that song is gonna bring you to some light. Or it's gonna bring some of your fans to some light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Music's music's the same to be fair. Yeah. And it's um, positive more. No, yeah. of course. Mm. And for the Clean. people that don't know about you or whatever you've got coming up, mm. where can they find you? What have you got coming up that we can expect? Um so yeah, boynash.com. Uh you can find my stuff there. I need to update that website myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Instagram is where I'm more active. So yeah. Instagram, check out Instagram, Boy Nash. Uh Road to Shalom's coming. Um it should hopefully be next year. I don't We'll see how it goes, man. I just, yeah. I just move with it. Yeah, 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 exactly, that's exactly, it, exactly. Can't really you can't force it. When you force it, that's when things go left. Yeah, you have exactly. to let just what, like your spirit, you, do you know what I mean? Just the high purpose lead, exactly. Yeah. Then you everything will go perfectly. Exactly. Exactly how it's supposed to go. Exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> and, um, do you have any, because we do this thing where we do final takeaways, for someone that doesn't have to just be music, it can be your career, your relationship, friendship, even when you stand in your family, is there a final takeaway in regards to your belief and how you should navigate yourself within that in your life mm. for the people? Uh, yeah, man, just look for light. Just look for the positive, man. Forget anything that's negative, man. Drop it. Anything that's negative, drop it, man. Because what's going to happen, you've got to stay on the positive path because when you're on the positive path, you're going to reach your identity. You're going to reach your truth. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? That's all I'd say because everyone's at different journeys. Like, yeah. once upon a time I was here, but now I'm here. Do you mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that, oh, I'm better than you because I'm here. No, no. Just stay positive. Keep believing. Keep striving. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? And, be, mm. and, and, and really, being an Israelite is just being the best version of yourself. Everything within, everything I study within that book or within that knowledge that I get is not is to become my higher self. Yeah. I want to be a yeah. better, best version that I can be of myself. That's it, really. And that's yeah, what we yeah. should all attain to be, the best versions of ourselves. You know? Yeah, yes. from the man himself. P. Listen, it's your girl, yes, he is, uh, you have been watching or listening to Hey Sis. Yes. But before you go... Make sure you like 
subscribe, comment, follow, and let us know what you'd want to hear, what you want to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have been listening or watching. Hey, sis. Wow. That was a good one, man. Yeah. yeah. We definitely have to chop it up, man. Yeah. 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 That was cool. I